Fertility medicine has come a very far distance in the last 40 years. I've only been involved in the last 10 or 15, but it seems as though every month there's a new technology, a new innovation, a new thought about how to help couples get pregnant. Infertility care is amazing. It's one of the most innovative and rapidly changing areas in medicine today. And people often don't appreciate that. You know, IVF is a relatively new invention, for example, and where we've come with fairly low success rates back, you know, a few decades ago, now success rates are incredibly high. This is a very interesting time in IVF because, um, you know, it's uh, only been about 35, 36 years since the first IVF baby was born. And so much has changed so quickly. I would say even in the last five years, we are making progress at a much more rapid pace than before. When I started in the field of obstetrics and gynecology, we didn't have very much to offer couples who suffered from infertility. We had a pair of uh, rubber gloves that we could wear when we examined a patient. We had an instrument that we could visualize the cervix of a woman. Uh, we had x-rays, but we had nothing else. It's an amazing privilege to work uh, with Al Usby. Uh, he is absolutely a pioneer in the field of, of reproduction and infertility. He was uh, right there from the beginning um, with some of the first oral medications we use, like clomiphene, um, and then right at the advent of, uh, of IVF. And, and now in this world, there are over five million babies born from IVF. In the early 1970s, I was involved with the introduction of laparoscopy, which is the, now the most commonly performed gynecologic surgical procedure, and which plays an integral part in many cases in the diagnosis of infertility, and in some cases treatment of certain types of infertility. And then another procedure called hysteroscopy, and of course this all culminated in uh, 1978 with the birth of uh, Louise Brown, the first baby born by in vitro fertilization, because uh, that technology was developed by two friends of mine, Dr. Patrick Steptoe and Dr. Robert Edwards. So to work with somebody who's been there right from the beginning and, and witness the struggles, both in terms of knowledge, they didn't know everything at that point, and nor do we know it all now, but it really were lots of gaps in the knowledge and the technology, and then to watch the, the increase in, in success rates go for leaps and bounds with each of these new advancements is, is incredible, because he's seen, he's seen it all. 1978 heralded something that was totally uh, Orwellian until, uh, until then. To be able to take eggs from a woman, fertilize them outside of her body with her partner's sperm, grow uh, fertilized eggs into embryos and then replace an embryo into a uterus and have a pregnancy result was uh, very far-fetched. But with the hard work of Dr. Steptoe and Edwards over many years, probably 10 years or more of research, that became a reality. And at that point, the whole concept of what we could do for women just opened uh, the floodgates. But he's also um, a shoulder that we can stand on. He's a giant in reproductive medicine and, and we look to him for the, the past story so we don't, you don't mis make the mistakes of the past and uh, look for his vision of the future too. He's a real uh, leader around here and we, uh, we re I think we really benefit from ha him having so many years of experience. And I am blessed to have three wonderful young partners who are not only bright and skilled and have all of the, the requirements, but we get along so well. Worldwide over five million babies have been born. Uh, from IVF. We are learning so much more about the safety of IVF. We are doing things that couldn't have been imagined a generation ago. So IVF is essentially a completely different field than it was when it was first founded. Um, to me, the most exciting advances have been in the laboratory, what we can do now. Um, and that's reflected in the ever-improving success rates. Uh, here at Olive, we have uh, a fantastic uh, world-class laboratory. We spared no expense on the equipment. We are constantly looking 
um, to invest in new uh, equipment and techniques um, to give our patients the best possible outcomes. But uh, more importantly, we have some of the finest lab staff that you'll find, um, highly trained, dedicated staff who are well-versed in all the latest, latest techniques. I see patients in the office who had a baby with us two or three years ago and they come back and they say, well, what's new? And I can say, well, there's a lot new actually. There's an embryo scope and there's biopsying embryos and there's a lot of, of technology and it's quite surprising for them to, to know that it's changed that much in that short period of time. So it's a very exciting time uh, in the, uh, the, the science of IVF right now. Today we have uh, achieved things that it's much like the days when we thought about uh, man going to the moon and then suddenly we were able to go to the moon and now we're going to Mars. And that's what's happening with the field of fertility. So 20 years ago, if you walked into a fertility clinic and, and you, it was determined that you needed IVF, you may have a 10% chance of having a baby from IVF. And now we can say most people who do IVF have a baby from that, particularly if, if the woman is under 40. So now we're looking at rates, you know, average clinic rates in the 60s and 70s. And that's what's exciting because I'm looking forward to a time when, you know, the rates are even closer to 100%. And I think we'll get there. I think we'll figure this out even more because the leaps even in 20 or 30 years have been so dramatic that I hope we just keep leaping that way. I just feel so fortunate to be part of it. And where we're going from here is anyone's guess. The sky's the limit.